Hello again. We've been looking at a lot of trigonometric equations, and I want to come up with an example. Uh, by the way, I also switched the color up there because that marker was starting to die, so I'm going to switch to blue when we're writing out the equations. So, when do we often use these trig? Especially in things like physics and math, often you're going to be working in vectors. Vectors, which are basically showing a magnitude and a direction. The most important thing is we're somehow having to analyze this and talk about cases where things are moving relative to each other. Well, this is when trigonometry and triangles are often applied. Because especially in physics, it's very common to talk about things like some plane moving through the air. Because it has components that if you're moving in that direction, you can split it into components. Um, same kind of idea if you're looking at a raft. I mean, what you might have is some kind of word problem where you're told a raft is moving through the water. Well, because of the current, it might affect how you move. Even if you're paddling, there also might be the current pushing you against you. And so you might end up with some kind of word problem where you're told you're on a raft. And you end up, after some time, being downriver, say south, downriver, let's say 50 meters. Just making up some numbers. So you travel 50 meters downriver, and in that time, you also went a further 10 meters from the shore. So you went, and we'll say that's in the east direction. Let's say. So you went 50 meters south, and you went a further 10 meters from the shore in the east direction, let's say. Great. So, the question might ask something like, how far are you from your initial spot? And people might be tempted to say, well, 50 plus 10, but no, that's not true. The actual distance we are from our initial spot is this, the hypotenuse. And we might also be asked to figure out what angle are we from the initial direction as well. This is a very kind of common question in physics, doing things like this, where you have an x and y component and you're trying to find the resultant, the overall length here, and the angle. Very, very common to do in these kind of first year courses. So let's look at this kind of example. I mean, again, it might be a word problem that you determine the diagram from it. And we were told that it's in the south, so this direction is south, this direction is east. We're basically using the normal compass. It means this is north and this is west. We'll do the angle later relative to that. So we're asked how far are we from our initial position? Well, this is the true distance we are. It's often called displacement in physics. The distance, the linear distance, the shortest distance between us and the starting point. Well, in this case, we'd be using Pythagorean theorem. This distance we can call d, not being creative, but hey, don't need to be. Well, we know Pythagorean theorem, d squared equals 50 squared plus 10 squared, or 2,500 plus 100 equals 2,600. All that equal to d squared. So d, if we take square root of both sides, would just be whatever the square root of 26 100 happens to be in terms of meters. That would give me my distance. Plug it into my calculator, get the number if I want, or leave it as this, depending on what your teacher wants, or what you want, depending on what you're using this for. But we might also be asked for the angle. Well, we got to figure out this angle. So, as always, we can call it whatever we want, maybe phi. And we've got all the other three lengths, but normally a good habit is when you're trying to figure out this angle, use the two lengths you knew right from the beginning. Why? Well, basically if you screwed this up, let's say you made a mistake, it's going to influence every other number you use this for. So if you use this D in your other calculations, you'd better be pretty confident it's right. So it's good just in case to use the two numbers you were given. Because you know this is right and this is right because it's what you were given. So, in this case, I have, if I'm looking at phi, I have the thing opposite it and the thing adjacent. So I'm using tan. Tan of phi equals opposite 10 over 50. Or in other words, tan phi equals 1 fifth. As always, take the tan to the minus 1 to get rid of this. And as always, I didn't leave myself enough room. I think I would learn by now. Tan to the minus 1 of 1 over 5. 
and we would plug that into our calculator and see what that was. Whatever that number, tan to the minus 1 of, point, of 0 0.2, plug it in, we'd get an angle. Um, in fact, maybe one of my fabulous assistants could figure that out while I get on to the next part. We'll see if we can get a number so I can actually use it for you in a second. Phi equals something we'll get in a second. Because right now we have the distance is square root of 2600, whatever number that is. And we have the angle here, but how do we write it? How do we actually write what the direction is? And you're going to see uh, in a second if I can read that number. We got an angle of 11.3 from what I understand. So, great. But how do we write this? We have this compass here, we got north, west, east, south, how does that relate? Well, the easiest way to think about doing angles, in this case, our D, our displacement, displacement, it's often a good idea if you have a word question to write a word answer, displacement is the square root of 2600 meters in what direction? Well, we know the angle is 11.3. And the easiest way to do this kind of notation when you're writing a direction is to think of the triangle you made. First I went south and then I went east. So that's why I write. 2600 meters south, well, then it's 11.3 east. This is how you do this kind of angles. When you're writing east of south or south east like this, you go, which direction did I go first? Because we also could have drawn the same exact triangle if I'd wanted to, except I could have gone east first and then south. And I would find this hypotenuse is the same, but then I would be calculating this angle, which is actually 90 minus this one. So I would get east, south, and it would be 78.7. The thing is, look at the triangle you drew. If I had gone east and then south, I would get the other angle there, say theta. So this would have given me both my displacement and the direction of that displacement. And really, an, this is a common thing in physics. What you're going to be doing often is giving components. We talk about the x and y component and solving the result and solving the hypotenuse. You see it again and again.